Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Gene at Phoenix 15 Studios Tech. Just coming to you with uh, a new uh, type of video. This is gonna be my personal uh, journey with computers. Um, I guess around late last year, I really started to dig deep into YouTube and watching other creators and kind of learning what how deep YouTube really was and getting a feel for what it was really about um, and, and somewhere along the line just got the idea uh, to start uh, putting content together myself um, watching creators like Oz Talks um, who builds everything from budget PCs to uh, upgrades uh, you know a whole bunch of different uh, videos that he does along with uh, tech talk and a whole bunch of other channels that make really good content uh, based around tech um, they kind of gave me the courage to go ahead and try to upgrade my own computer and the computer that I decided to upgrade uh, out of the dozen that I have in the house was my personal use HP Envy Phoenix 860-010 uh, it's a desktop computer it's supposed to be HP's gaming uh, computer. Um, a little more advanced than your run-of-the-mill uh, pavilion uh, desktop PC. Um, when I bought it, I made sure the, the specs kind of matched what was top of the line at the time, uh, to my knowledge anyway. Um, turns out it's one of the worst motherboards I've ever come across. The RAM was kind of middle of the line at 16 gigs uh, from the factory. Um, had a very modest video card uh, in it. Good enough to run most applications. So it met my needs at the time. Uh, I was purchased in 2015, and now in 2020. Doing a little more work uh, with the channels that I'm producing for. Um, so I needed a little more power. So stock, this computer came with an Intel i7 6700. Um, which was five years ago uh, and still is a, a very functional processor. It works. It does most of the things I needed to do. Um, it starts to really get choppy when I get into Premiere and After Effects and things like that. I mean, I've seen it shoot up to 85% usage when I'm in the middle of a Premiere project. So um, the unfortunate downside of that and something you don't know when you buy a pre-built computer and something I learned from Oz Talk and Tech Talk and uh, you know all the other channels that I've watched you're very limited to what you can upgrade in a pre-built computer without swapping out the entire motherboard at which point you may as well just build your own machine that processor is the highest processor that that motherboard will hold found that out five years later as I did not have that on my uh, mind as a you know a parameter or uh, upgradeability um, when I when I purchased the computer, um, the computer also uh, came stock with 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the motherboard on HP's website and on the motherboard manufacturer's website says that this motherboard will operate with as much as 64 gigs of RAM. So I purchased two kits of 32 uh, in hopes of getting it up to 64 and getting the most I could get out of it in the RAM department video card that comes in this computer stock was the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960, uh, which is a two gigabyte uh, GPU. It is what it is. It's worked all these years. It's just getting to the point where I feel like I need to, I need a little more in the GPU department. Uh, so we upgraded that. And then we took a look at the storage. Now the weird thing about the storage with this computer was it came with a 128 gigabyte solid state as your system drive uh, and then it had a two terabit uh, optical drive uh, for storage the issue i ran into with that is the amount of programs that you can install on that 128 uh, gig system drive was minuscule with all the programs software and drivers that i need installed i was easily maxing that drive out um, it took me a few years to do it, but as I added equipment and added software to my library of things and tools that I use uh, to produce, it just didn't work for me anymore. So we upgraded that. So our upgrade components. For the RAM, we went with Crucial's Ballistics Gaming Memory. Um, I got 
two kits of 32. So two, uh, two sticks per kit, uh, 16 gigs per stick. Um, nice looking memory, but it's not an open case as you can see. Uh, so how it looks really didn't matter. These particular sticks are white. Not my first choice, but it seemed like the best thing to go with at the time. So I went with it. For the GPU, I decided to go with the uh, Gigabyte Radeon RX 570, uh, which is actually an eight gigabyte graphics card, which is a huge jump from the two gigabyte GPU that came in the system stock. For the storage issue, we decided to add three total terabit storage by way of one crucial M.2 drive, one terabit. I decided to go with the ScanDisk, two terabit solid state drive, and that'll be a runoff storage and scratch disk for all my programs uh, for my already 89% full optical drive that also has a two terabit storage capacity. With all that said, there's one last thing. I have never opened up a computer in my entire life, not once. But with all the great content creators on YouTube, and all the resources available, I decided to take the leap, buy the components, and install them myself. When I purchased the HP, uh, I believe the MSRP was about uh, $1,500. So I purchased it for $1,500. It's just the tower, keyboard, and mouse. No display, no anything, no soft, no additional software, just the tower and the two peripherals. And uh, it's probably one of the biggest tech purchases I had made at that point. Uh, I've made quite a few more uh, since then, um, but at the time I was pretty pretty proud of my purchase. It was the best computer I'd ever owned. Um, I was not even aware that you know PC building was such a big thing until you know really coming across it you know on YouTube and speaking to a few friends who actually are into it. That's when I decided to do it myself. At that point, I order the components. They arrive and I immediately go to work. I take the computer apart, I beat the side off, and I just dig in. So one of the major problems that I ran into was uh, space. In this cabinet, there was not a lot of space. This HP was made for the components that it was built with, with no upgrades in mind, even down to the storage bays. The first thing I swapped out was the video card. Big mistake swapped out the video card. I took the old card out, threw the new card in, popped the new RAM, the old RAM out, put the new RAM in, and then went to go install the M.2 drive, which is behind the GPU. In goes the M.2, back in goes the GPU, and we go to boot it up to see if we can get this puppy firing, and no, nothing. The computer would not boot. My first disaster. So my immediate thought was, it's the GPU. The GPU is not compatible. It's not working for some reason. Maybe I installed it wrong, whatever. So I pop it out, I put the old GPU back in. Still won't boot. Didn't know what to do. Had to phone a friend, which was Cam, one of my good buddies who actually builds computers. Over the phone, obviously there wasn't much he could do, but I kind of let him know what was going on and we started to troubleshoot over the phone. Still couldn't quite figure it out, but he gave me a few scenarios to run and see where we could get you know, the following day. So I came home from work, dove right back in, um, swapped out everything, put all the original components back in, computer booted up just fine. So it's one of the new components that I got. It's not jiving with the system. So the first scenario was the G the new GPU back in with the old RAM. Then we take the old RAM out and replace it with the new RAM. Computer again would not boot. So now we're back to all new components, no boot. My buddy Cam made the suggestion to take one of the RAM kits out and try to boot it that way. And once I did that, the computer booted right up. So now we know it's a RAM issue. I didn't know if I had a bad kit or whether the board just wasn't agreeing with the 64 gigs or whatever. At which point we started to dig through the BIOS and this BIOS is about as plain Jane and just, oh, it was a disaster. Once we realized it was the RAM 
and try to go through the BIOS and see if there were any settings we could tweak or somehow get this RAM uh, to be recognized and, and, and boot the system up. Nothing worked. There was nothing. This BIOS is just very, very basic. Um, nothing we could do there. Um, so at that point, we switched one kit with the other. The computer still booted. So now we know we don't have a faulty set of RAM. We just have a motherboard that won't take 64 gigabytes of RAM, even though on HP's website and the manufacturer's website, or all the information I can find on the manufacturer of the motherboard, they all say that you can run 64 gigs of RAM in this system. So unfortunately, at this point, as of this date, I've had to settle with just 32 gigs of RAM, which is still double what I had when I got the system. So no complaints and definitely an improvement in performance. The M.2 system drive boots this system so fast, like it's a noticeable difference from the uh, solid state drive uh, that was in it. The solid state drive was super snappy, but the M.2 is just a hair uh, quicker and more responsive in my opinion. Not a huge noticeable difference, but if you went from an optical drive to an M.2, there would be a huge difference. With the M.2 drive, it's just a little snappier and gets you to work a little faster. The ballistic gaming RAM from Crucial is awesome. Immediate improvements in productivity with Premiere Pro, uh, Adobe, after effects and illustrator which are the primary uh, programs that i use in adobe uh, creative cloud um, immediate improvements in the workflow and just less uh, freezing and locking up much better performance still uh, not where i needed to be i really think that 64 gigs of ram would have helped if anybody has any suggestions on what i can do about this i'll put all the original components in the description if you have any ideas on how I can get past this hurdle and get this baby up to 64 gigs, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, this is a journey for me. It's just starting now, uh, and we will see where it goes. We plan on building a PC uh, very soon um, and doing some bench tests and, and kind of gaming with that and streaming with it and just trying to see what we can build ourselves um, and kind of get away from, you know, the knee-jerk reaction when you need a new computer to just run to your local, you know, Best Buy and, and, and buy a computer off the shelf. Build something that can be upgraded and, and, you know, made into what you need it for. And that's what we plan to achieve. This will be a running series on my journey uh, with upgrading and building uh, PCs. Um, hopefully a smooth journey, but probably not because there's always something that can go wrong. If you're just starting to build do not be discouraged. There's always gonna be a snafu. There's always gonna be something that's in your way. If you're just starting to build like me and you run into a wall, do not be discouraged. Pick up the phone, get on a forum, watch the YouTube videos, watch Oz Talks, watch Linus on Text Talk. These guys have answers that you might need and they can get you through. This is gonna be a running vlog of my journey in building and upgrading computers. I have about four desktops in the house and about four laptops in the house. And I plan on upgrading all of them over time. I'm gonna upload every upgrade and build to YouTube in hopes that we can build a community of dads and newbies that are just starting out like myself and that we can all get together and help each other build some great rigs. That's pretty much my mission and I hope you guys are willing to come along for the ride with me. This is video number one and uh, we'll be giving you an update on this build in the upcoming weeks and then figuring out what else we can upgrade on this. Although I think this is pretty much maxed by the specs and, and, and what you can take it to probably at this point. The only thing I can really upgrade further uh, outside the video card um, is the power supply. Exciting. And bigger hard drives, of course. Um, and I can also add an additional hard drive, but uh, there's not a whole lot more mileage I can get out of upgrading this one. Um, so I do have a few other systems in the house I'm going to gather up and kind of uh, start researching, you know, what components they take and how I can get the, the optimal performance out of these, out of these parts, so out of these systems. On top of all that, me and my kids are planning right now to build our very first system from top to bottom. Uh, with our buddy Cam as a consultant, uh, we're picking out components currently and getting ready to order those and hopefully by mid-August we'll be documenting that build 
and getting ready uh, to post that video up for everyone to check out. Again, please, if you have any suggestions, if you have any questions uh, with the little bit of knowledge I've obtained uh, you know, over the last few months and with this upgrade process, I'd be happy to help. Hopefully you're happy to help us out here at Phoenix 15 Tech. Thanks again for coming along with us on this journey. This is Gene at Phoenix 15 Tech. We'll be talking to you soon.